You are listening to the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. Look, everyone's interested in money. Now, I'm not saying everybody's greedy. But I am telling you that when it comes to podcasting, there's this dangling little carrot out in front, and very often it's got dollar signs. Well, you know what? You must monetize your podcast. Or do you? That's what we're going to talk about inside this episode of the Podcast Gauntlet, where we throw down, discuss, rise, and shine in podcasting. Greetings, everybody. I'm Mike Wilkerson, one of your hosts. And I'm Brian Ensminger, the other one of your hosts. Brian, today we're talking about something that I think I have heard from, with maybe a couple of rare exceptions, every single podcaster I've ever talked to, especially ones that are very excited about seeing giant contracts flying out to celebrities, where if that person can do it, well, surely I can. And boy, I can't wait for my money because I'm going to monetize my podcast. Um, this is going to be yeah. a great one. I hope everybody straps in. Yeah, it's uh, it's really kind of near and dear to my heart. And it's really interesting to me because as I look back over the years, having done this now for over a decade, I remember a time when what we heard was you can't make money from your podcast, almost like it's not allowed, right? And it was like people that made money were sellouts. Now it's like the opposite. If you're not making money, why are you even doing this? You're, you're an idiot, right? <laughs> I mean, I am, but let's Wait a minute. talk you've, about that. You've... Right, you've uh, you, you've purchased all of this equipment. You take so much time, and dedication to your program, but you're not making any money with it. Pfft, crazy, yeah. And, and so it's it's like you can't win. But I, I too remember the time where anytime I would talk about the monetization of podcasting, and I, I got to be honest, I lucked out in that in 2007 I got a giant sponsor to to foster my podcast network. I got Sprint to to foster my network. And it really did help. It allowed me to spend money and find ways to do things and try and experiment and do new things that I would have never thought of because I would have had the money to do it. And so uh, there's definitive value, but the concept of re having a requirement that you must now monetize your podcast is something it's what we're going to talk about today, but it's something I, I, I have a lot of passion in both directions because I think, especially with people with very specific uh, skill sets and the ability to tell people about things they either would have never known about or better yet, people that already know a little bit about something, but can listen to somebody else and find out even more. That's an instant potential sale inside of the concept of monetizing, not only your perspective, but the stuff that you capture and put onto the internet. There's a, there's a, just about every tool that you see now on the internet allows you to be able to do something inside of what we've just talked about there. And so you must do it, right? No. <laughs> uh, one of the other largest ideas that uh, I've only, it's probably been the last five years of my 20-year extravaganza in podcasting that I've discovered is that a podcast can actually be one of the best avenues of promotion and cycling awareness of you and your product and or your business that has nothing to do with making money, except that it's it's kind of, it's kind of a, it's not a loss leader. It's a, it's where you're, you, you have to be out there somehow. And there are thousands of podcasts and YouTube channels and presences of all kind right now that I can think of that are doing exactly this, where you can ask them, okay, so like, what are you making with your podcast? And you say, well, what, what do you mean? What am I making? We're making a presence that helps people understand who we are our attitudes and some uh, some information about our company or regular uh, augments to our company or specials that we offer or whatever those things are, those are all inside of our podcast. I'm like, oh, okay, Th that's very interesting. What that turned into, uh, I remember specifically, was the, uh, the, home, uh, the Home Improvement Encyclopedia podcast that I did. That one was great because they'd never thought about doing anything like a podcast. And what theirs turned out to be, typically they're, they're, uh, get in to talk to people. It usually lasted between three and six hours. And I'm like, three and six hours talking to people? Wow. They're like, yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm like, what? that's a that's a huge time investment, not only just for you, but also for the people that, that you've, you, you're going to talk to in their homes, you're talking? Yes, we're going to their homes, talk to them. And I'm like, 
okay, well, I've got a proposition for you. What if you could have much of the conversation before you ever got into their home? And they're like, how the hell are we going to do that? And I'm like, well, let me show you. And so what we started was a series of samples for them so that those, those conversations that they're having where they're tapping people's brains on the shoulder, essentially, and trying to grab ideas or lines of thought or reasons to use their company, those are all tucked into something you can access on the internet 24-7, 365, instead of having to secure a piece of it between three and six hour appointment. And for, for the company, they thought that that was like, there's no way that that could happen. But it absolutely can happen. And for the companies that don't know that they should be doing that yet, it absolutely can be done. And it's viable because again, after the spend and the time and the attention is to make whatever you're going to have out there, it just lives on the internet and continues to work for you as you sleep. That That's how I sold it to them. And that that's where the concept of being able to monetize your stuff doesn't actually have to have a prescribed dollar amount attached to it. It, it can have an augment or a concept behind it. That's something other then, and here's $3,500 for this podcast. Right. Yeah. I love this discussion so much because I'm first off, I have no problem with people making money from or through their podcast. In fact, I hope they do. I hope I do because it pays the bills. But I also hate the idea that some people who started a show with a goal are being told by people, well, it does, it's not worth it if you're not making any money. What if the thing that you were hoping to get out of your show was a legacy? We had a, an episode where we recently talked about leaving a legacy. And let me tell you, if what you leave is a legacy and that's the thing you want from your show, let that be the thing that you get from your show. Build your show around that. I think the real problem comes when we start trying to serve two masters, so to speak. There's, there's a scripture, I'm a person of faith, there's a scripture that talks about serving two masters and that you can't. You'll either love one and hate the other, you'll serve one and despise the other. Well, that's what ends up happening. And what I see too often is people that start and they go, man, there is this community of people that needs this show for whatever reason. And then a couple of years in, they start thinking, but also I could make some money. And eventually they end up having to make a choice between which one they want. And they, they go from being happy with what they're doing, if maybe a little bit overworked and under-resourced, which is possible, to feeling divided about what they're doing and constantly like they're, they're not really doing what they could do to monetize their show, whatever that means for them, or they're not really doing what they could do to serve this group of people because they're having to make choices to do one or the other. I think the perfect answer is, can you do both? Absolutely. If you can, if you can get resources and something from your show in terms of satisfaction and enjoyment and a legacy and all of those other things, absolutely do that. If it's marketing, absolutely. But know what that thing is and don't feel like you have to change it because somebody said, well, if you're not doing this, it's not really worth it. It's not really valuable. It doesn't really matter. Or you're just, you're just throwing money after badge. If you're never going to make money at this, you're just throwing money at it. Man, I donate money to places that will never give me anything for the rest of my life because I believe in what they're doing. And if that's what your podcast is for you, do it. And don't let somebody, don't even let me tell you not to, right? Do what you need to do. I, I love all of that. Mostly the part about do what you want to do inside of the realm of podcasting. I, 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 I don't think it gets any more clearer than that. Uh, for whatever reason you're doing it, do it. Get out it, there and do it. Your show. Uh, one of the things, one of the things you and I've been talking about since the inception of not only this program, but before you and I even started this program, was that whenever, whenever either you or I have met somebody that wants to get into podcasting, one of the I know one of the first things I always tell people is, "Wow, that's a really great idea. Do it. Yeah. Do it." But when are you going to start? When's your first program? What's it going to be about? How can I help? All, th those are all of my very first front end questions because I want another, I want another friend in podcasting. More importantly, I want to see other people grow with their program and, and start building that legacy. It's the, uh, the, the last five or so years working inside of um, one of my programs called whatcopswatch.com. Uh, what I do there is I bring on law enforcement uh, officials and officers with varying skill sets and experiences, and we run through television, feature films, and streaming media. We tell you what's real and what's a bunch of bullshit. 
And what I've learned from that is that, you know, th they typically don't like to come on and talk about themselves at all until you start talking about the concept of legacy. Mm -hmm. Because that instantly becomes a learning lesson that even if it's not about being a cop or uh, being an official of insert name of um, alphabet organization that is doing something, if it's nothing about that, what it instantly becomes is it's about what they were thinking when they first saw whatever it is we're talking about. And then the stories that are solicited from that, that instantly help people understand that they too are just people just like them. That has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with a legacy because the storytelling, all the stories that they convey, the little light bulb moments that appear inside of stories like that, the, the light bulb moments that are witnessed by fr uh, from people like me during those programs that I know the audience is also having, it's it's a chef's kiss, dude. It's it's the it's it, it's what fuels me inside of podcasting. The concept of finding light bulb moments in storytelling is why I podcast. There's a definitive line of things that I talk about. Typically, it's entertainment based, but it's entertainment based mostly just because I've been doing entertainment for as long as I have. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but whatever it is out there for you, that's also out there. And so again, to get back to the front end question of what we're talking about. Do you, you must monetize your podcast? No, no, you absolutely do not. You don't. Can you monetize your podcast? Likely, you can. Do you need to kill yourself to try and figure out how to monetize your podcast? Don't do that. Because what I have seen on the, on the other side of somebody saying, I just want to do this just to do this. The other side of it is they've tried so hard to find a way to monetize what they're doing. Not only is it not fun anymore, it's become something that they loathe to do. Yeah. And that's where podcasting and really content creation of any kind, especially inside the YouTube realm, YouTube realm right now, instantly can become a punji pit where, man, this is cool. And you're running 35 miles an hour down a really cool looking path. And then mm -hmm. suddenly there's a piece of bamboo in your ass because you're not having fun anymore. You get to the point where, oh, my God, it's time to capture more content. What are we going to do? When are we going to edit it? I don't know. Hey, who are we going to have on? I don't know. Did you call somebody? No, I didn't. Did you? Uh, right. All of those things become a frustration as opposed to something that you really had fun doing to begin with. And so don't let monetization become this crushing source of stress inside of your podcast adventure. Let it be something that can help to inspire you that very often, especially if you find the right avenues for monetization, can instantly take the load off, can allow you to experiment far more than you ever wanted to. Uh, very often, it can also allow you to advertise in places that you just frankly couldn't previously because you didn't have any extra money. Mm -hmm. um, but then it also gives you some freedom. Um, think about it. If you had an extra $2,500 over the course of the next six months to do something extra because you're conjuring X amount of episodes and you found a sponsor for it because your podcast is monetized, what would you do with it? Mm -hmm. Would you go, I don't know, maybe hire a talented yet uh, semi without hair editor that can help you with podcast <laughs> hey, editing? Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, well, well, never mind. <laughs> the, the, the bottom line, the, the, that's actually another program that we'll add to our never, never ending list of podcast content. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, the, the, the concept of uh, monetization, it's, uh, it's something that everybody's got passion about, whether you're on each, either of the sides that Brian or, and I have talked about, or somewhere in the middle where frankly, all of us usually end up anyway. And that's where we want to hear from you about monetization. Be sure you go over to our website over at podcastgauntlet.com. Click and fill out the web form and let us know what you think about monetization. Brian, anything last thing? Yes. I would just like to remind people that within the context of making money through advertising or something like that, the appetite for free media will never be satiated. Never feel like you can actually get caught up and don't allow the appetites of people who are not actually investing in what you're trying to do dictate how you do it. It's okay to receive from people, but the, you're the one creating it. You have to be the one that protects yourself and your creation. Don't let expectations from people who are just taking, receiving, not offering anything back, don't allow that to dictate how you do it and whether or not you're able to continue. Man, that's incredibly well said. There's, there's, there's a little tag along that goes with that. And 
the, the, the concept of monetizing your program, but then having to modify content to satiate whomever or whatever <laughs> yes. is your sponsor. Um, Brian, I got to tell you, it's another thing that's got to go on the list somewhere because that's real. That not only is that real, there are some of the largest podcasters in history that have been woefully impacted by doing exactly what we're talking about there. And uh, it, it can not only, not only, not only does it upend the talent, the podcaster, it upends the audience. Mm -hmm. And so monetization uh, can become a very, very double-edged sword that you really must take caution in jumping into and understanding uh, what you're willing to do. Uh, inside of YouTube, I think is probably where I've experienced that with another client mm -hmm. where because of the content that they're making, they're willing to do reviews of what they are taking in as product, but they're very clear about the caveat of now, look, um, I'm willing to take in your product. I'm even willing to take you on as a sponsor, but understand I'm going to be conveying my opinion right. about your product and or service inside of this program, whichever way it leans. I, and I, it's something you've got to be clear on the front end, especially if there's a that that sponsorship concept that we're talking about uh, inside of your program that can instantly impact not only you, not only your opinions, not only your previous content, but m the largest one, your audience. Um, th there are mm -hmm. there are uh, so many very quickly appearing porcupine uh, pins that can appear with something like the concept of monetization inside of a podcast. So always. Uh, do some do some roundabout thinking. Find a friend and ask. You know, if I do this, what do you think about that? Uh, surround yourself with just a couple of people that you trust their opinions on. Ask the questions and then find out whether or not monetization is right for you and your podcast. Man, uh, again, we've talked about so much inside this episode, and I urge all of you to uh, first of all. Click the like button if you're watching us inside of the video presentation. Over here on the subscribe button, make sure you're doing that too so that you get the new programs that we put out here at the Podcast Gauntlet. But most importantly, tell us what you think over at our website, over at podcastgauntlet.com. Fill in the quick web form and tell us what you think. Until next time, it's always time to throw down, discuss, rise and shine here on the Podcast Gauntlet. I'm Mike Wilkerson, one of your hosts. And I'm Brian Entzminger. I'm about to take some me time, and I'm the other one of your hosts. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.